Hello. Hello. Yeah. Yeah, Dr. Bernard is here. Yeah. I think we don't still have Kit here, so we should go straight to the discussion. I'm not sure. Did it maybe you did not catch the time because if it's outside China, maybe did not catch yeah. the Time we were yeah, to start. probably that won't happen. It's in Cyprus, All right. right? What's the time difference of Cyprus? He's in What's Cyprus. Maybe he missed the time difference. Yeah, maybe he missed the time. That's why. All right. Oh, there he is. Okay, he's here. Kid, Kid Duna is here. Okay. All right. Uh, Mr. K, can you hear us? Hello? Oh, he's connecting his audio. Welcome, Claudia. I see you. Welcome, Joyce. <laughs> Welcome, Joyce. I see you. I see you. <laughs> All right. Uh, Mr. K is trying to join his audio and uh, so we can start sending a message. Okay. Welcome, Kay. Can you hear us, Mr. K? Can you hear us? Okay. Okay, I guess we have technical issue with uh, the person who's supposed to present. Um, let's just hold on for a few minutes. Okay, if that's him, if that's Xiaomi. Mr. Johnson, can you hear me? Yeah, I'm getting you. I'm hearing you. All right. Okay, I think we have some serious technical difficulty with uh, Mr. Uh, okay, over there. So I guess Dr. Bala. So I think we should go ahead, go to okay. the discussion. If K get connected stable, and uh, we still have time, we we'll allow him uh, say a couple of things in a few minutes. But uh, I think we should go ahead if we can. Okay, no we can we can move the Mr. M M Mr. K. Can you hear us? 
Can you unmute yourself? You are muted. We can't hear you. Can you unmute yourself? Hello, guys. Can you hear us? Yeah, hello. I'm hearing you guys. I'm, I'm currently I'm I join with my phone. I'm finding it difficult to join my computer, so I'm doing it fast. I'm doing it fast. I beg you guys, please give me one minute. CMF 2021. Yes, yeah, so we go to the discussion and uh, we could allow K present later. Maybe by the time we go 15 minutes, you'll be settled in and then okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, sure. You sure, sure. The computer and everything, you know, take your time. So me and uh Mr. Johnson can start ahead and uh, uh, with our discussion question, and then it's going to take us about 15 minutes. And then after that, you can go ahead and do the presentation. Eddie. OK, I'll take that as a yes. Okay. Oh, Bala, please, go ahead. We're going to start. Dr. Bala, are you waiting for a signal? Yeah, sure. I'm set. We already live, by the way. <laughs> we can start now. Are we yeah. live? Yes, we are. Okay. All right. So uh, good evening, good morning, good uh, afternoon, everybody, wherever you're joining us, the people joining us on Zoom, welcome. The people joining us on YouTube, on Facebook, or whatever platform you're joining us tonight or today, we welcome you. So we're going to start today uh, with a very important topic that uh, you know, usually affect most of the most of the countries in the sub-Saharan Africa. So uh, I will just introduce myself. My name is Dr. Faustin Nombulu. I'm a, a master student in China where I work as a cardiologist and then uh, the person who is going to join me to discuss today, his name is Mr. Johnson, who's going to introduce himself. Mr. Johnson, good evening. Yeah, good evening. Um, I'm Johnson S. Gakula, okay. a master's student in public health at the Southern Medical University. And, uh, nice to meet you, bro. So uh, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, have a two minute of prayer, one, one second of prayer, so then we can start. Father God, we thank you for tonight. We thank you for everybody who have joined. We pray that our discussion will be covered by your blood, and then you will give us the wisdom that we need to have for to save more lives today and tomorrow. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 Okay. Uh, so I'm just gonna go ahead straight with questions. You know, uh, we have so many ideas about what is uh, malaria. Can you just give us a definition, a brief definition of what is malaria? And then uh, we can go ahead and have an idea and answer the question. Okay, thank you very much, um, Dr. Faustina. Yes. You know, uh, malaria, um, especially for most of us who come from the Africa region of the WHO, we are familiar with the term malaria uh, as a disease condition. So we normally refer to it as an infectious disease condition uh, that is being caused by the plasmodium and as a vector, the anopheles mosquito. Mm -hmm. So um, malaria is a significant global health problem with a substantial death burden worldwide and still remains a major threat to public health. So, uh, as we speak of current data from the WHO, we know that uh, as of 2022, the World Health Organization report, we have a total of 247 million people that have been uh, uh, in terms of cases, malaria cases in the world. And out of that number, we have uh, 619,000 deaths globally. So that's a huge number every year. So it, that, that, that brings about a huge public health burden and concern as a disease of concern. So mm -hmm. uh, basically, that's what we're gonna be talking about. And uh, uh, there's a vector borne disease, which is the vector is a mosquito. And we know that uh, most of our regions, especially Sub-Saharan Africa, which is predominantly hit uh, by mal malaria, uh, we have these cases occurring. 
I know we have somebody who's supposed to do the presentation. So yeah. while he's setting up, uh, we will just be talking about that. But uh, basically, that's about malaria. And, uh, okay, thank you. thank you so much. Thank you so much, Mr. Johnson, uh, for that. Uh, my next question is, uh, you know, because malaria, as you said in your, uh, in your introduction, that malaria is a public health uh, uh, emergency, a problem in the public health, especially the WHO has said in sub-Saharan Africa, it has been affecting a lot of people. So I have a question. I mean, I receive a question. Somebody's asking, uh, is there any vaccination scope for malaria, like for other diseases? Oh. Uh. Yes, uh, that's a major breakthrough now for the world and uh, thanks to the WHO and uh, the, especially the global strategy on the malaria. Yes, mm. as we speak currently, there are, there's, there's a vaccine in trial since 2019. So we say yes to that. So the World Health Organization has recommended widespread use of the RTS and the vaccine which is a malaria vaccine among children in sub-Saharan Africa. So that's what we made reference to RNA that uh, has been pilot. So there it's been rolled out in three countries. So we have Ghana, uh, Malawi, and then we have Kenya. Those are countries that are, uh, the, uh, the vaccine has been rolled out since 2019. And as of current, we have more than 1.2 million children that have been vaccinated where, uh, with such vaccine. Okay, so, so what if, do you have any idea about the, the efficacy of the vaccine that they are rolling out? So um, with the, the current report of uh, the WHO Director General, uh, uh, with, as you said, they still piloted, so they're, they're still doing cases, so it's still in a, a trial, so it's a clinical trial process. So um, they're still trying to fill out the efficacy, the vaccine efficacy, and uh, to see the potential point of that. But uh, in, uh, in addition to that, uh, because it's actually a pre erectric uh, stage malaria vaccine that provides partial protection against infection malaria, especially in the uh, hyperimmune adults. So they're actually trying that for children first. So it's basically try on a trial phase in that case. Okay. All right. Thank you so much for that. And we hope that this vaccine uh, trial will be a success. And that's going to be a good thing, not only for Africa or Southeast Asia, but the whole world. So uh, my next question is this. So as malaria is a public health emergency, is there a way to eradicate it all over you know, Africa or you know, most countries? especially in a developed country, is if we don't count the vaccination, is there any other way we can use to eradicate that disease? Definitely, yes. And uh, we have is an evidence base from other countries that are, have eliminated malaria, such as China. So okay. we will be looking at their success story to be able to see how best we can address that question. So with the first answer, we say yes, it is but needs more concerted efforts from the highest in terms of government and then to the lowest in terms of the community because mm -hmm. of concerted effort. Uh, so many considerations need to be done, especially when it comes to cost effectiveness. So as you may be aware, um, uh, 2001, African countries gathered in Abuja and had the Abuja Declaration, right? where these African countries uh, committed their GDP, uh, uh, GDP at least 15% of their national budget to health. So mm -hmm. in that case, I think if uh, we have a more concerted effort in terms of uh, resource mobilization, we can uh, be able to meet up this milestone uh, achievement. All right, so uh, let's take into consideration China's remarkable achievement and uh, the culmination of decades of dedicated effort to that of a national malaria program, all right? So when we look at that, um, that, is, that, that effort shows a clear, uh, a clear process, sources for African countries or other yeah. African countries to see how best the elimination of malaria can become a success. 
So like, for example, we say China success in eliminating material rely on multifaceted advantages that we talk about government, we talk about the people involvement and in including but not limited to the concerted commitments from government universal investment in health. So we're talking about countries budget. How many countries? Like, let's say for example, Liberia. Currently we have uh, just 10% of our budget uh, being allocated to health, which is far below the 15% uh, allotment in the Abuja Declaration. So okay. all of those efforts can become uh, 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 a reality. And then uh, graduating okay. now from uh, the traditional prevention or uh, intervention, just in terms of um, maybe uh, talking about uh, tackling the vector instead of you talking about the source. So like China also was able to roll out that to the Comoros. If you talk up, if you think about the Comoros project that started uh, some 2007 and up to 2015, China was able to become so successful in that. Where today Comoros now is malaria free as well as China. So we talk about you know, fast elimination of, of malaria source rather than just the wild vector. So practically speaking, that means that the government has to step in first, giving a high budget for uh, health. And not only that, the people, the community will have also to work in uh, correspondence with the government in order to help that. So if I want to say that specifically, what does it mean? Like the government, government has to eliminate all the mosquitoes that are in, in, in the city, in, in the country, or do they have to make sure that all the dirty places where the mosquito breed and everything has to be taken away and then make sure that people are using mosquito repellent and all those stuff. So what are the concrete stuff that we have to do? Like concrete. Okay. So uh, quickly, we talk about, uh, we look at small governmental leadership based on science and evidence and, and financial support. Now uh, there should be more investment in terms of research, scientific research, right? So uh, let's say for instance, back home or in other country, like that gives library of case study. Uh, we have the insecticide treated nets, uh, bed nets. They have been used, or they have been misused and used for other purposes. So mm -hmm. we need good concerted efforts, both from the government and that of the, from the public, all right? So we also talk about another condition, we talk about what, uh, in terms of this scientific research. So like in China, 2015, due to the work of uh, the Chinese scientists, two, two UU, all right? With the, the anti-misia ANOA, right? So the yeah. anti-medicine-based therapy, a combination-based therapy. So that was a major breakthrough for China, at least to be able to uh, meet all that milestone development in terms of uh, meeting up the benchmark of eliminating malaria. So another yeah. condition also, we talk about uh, national collaboration and that of international uh, collaboration. So yeah. we're not just looking at the national malaria control program, just from program perspective but uh, seeing the need that these programs uh, are yielding the exact results that they are actually intended for. So that's okay. what we're talking about. We can also copy the, the Comoros project talking about fast elimination of our malaria source, right? So rather than just the vector. So, that so what we can be able to uh, eradicate the plasmodium, obviously, you know, the mosquito without, we cannot, without the plasmodium will not cause the malaria. Got it. Yeah. All right, thank you so much. So that means that we have to, uh, first of all, learn from the countries that successfully eliminated malaria, like the USA, China, and as you have just mentioned, Comoros in Africa, who have been able to eliminate the disease because of the government effort and also the people effort. That's very important. So uh, I just want to ask, let's say somebody lives in China or uh, in, uh, in, in Europe, and then they want to go home to visit, let's say, Liberia, Congo, um, Tanzania, they want to go and visit. Does that person have to take a medicine for malaria before going home? Yeah, sure. Definitely. When you're traveling in the malaria endemic area, it's a need that you 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 you, you prioritize in terms of the prophylysis. So you mm -hmm. need to be treated. And uh, why you travel, and after your travel, also you need to be treated, okay, to so that you'll be able to be free of 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 in the contracting the the. Uh, if I'm going home for let's say somebody is going home for two months, or let's say for one month. So for the whole one month, they will have to take drug every single day. Is that what you want to say? 
No, if you're not vaccinated, if you're not vaccinated, that's when the prophylaxis come in, it becomes a priority. So that okay. you're not going to be taking drug every day, but all the period of time. So you, it's like you're already advanced, in advance. It's okay. So you do a medication advance, and after your travel, your visit, you also have to do that so that the you will be able to reduce the parasite flow in terms of infectious risk of infection. Okay, all right. So uh, except from the prophylactic medicine that we have to take, we can take while going home, which I believe that a lot of African, especially from my country, I'm from Congo. Uh, most of us we don't usually take prophylactic medicine before going home and everything because we. We usually take it for going when we go outside the country, not when we're going inside it. So that is a very uh, interesting way of seeing stuff. And I believe that uh, the people who are listening to us, following us, they should look more into it and uh, when they're going home to visit. So uh, I just want to ask something else. Um, except from the prophylactic medicine, what else can we take? Let's say mosquito repellent, or do we have to dress up? Uh, light colors, like what are the steps we can take in order to avoid mosquito bites and also ultimately the malaria uh, disease? Yes, so, so those are all the preventive measures, right? The, the, those are traditional measures in terms of prevention. So we're talking about re, uh, mosquito repellent, uh, uh, indoor residual spray, they are all still used in the current. Uh, we also talk about uh, the insecticide treated badness, all right? Mm. So, and also wearings of, uh, uh, the clothing that covers the body to prevent you from the bite because it is from the mosquito bite and the, that's when they are doing the uh, blood meal. So you'll be able to work in terms of uh, how the plasmodium injected into the, into the bloodstream. So right. what that is prevented in terms of direct contact with mosquito bite, you, you definitely, you are, you, are, you, are, you are protected. Okay. All right, thank you so much. Last question I wanna ask is, uh, let's say somebody is actually home in a place where there's malaria, let's say in Brazil, in uh, Ecuador or in Liberia, and then uh, that person went, goes outside the country and then start having symptoms of malaria. Can I take, can that person take the medicine without even going to the hospital to test themselves? Okay, and that's I another thing of, of that. Um, so in terms of, uh, that's about um, doing the malaria treatment without any confirmation test. Yes, so exactly. basically it's basically as only all of these uh, besides malaria, it, which of course it is not evidence-based to be given with antimicrobial treatment without laboratory investigation. So mm -hmm. it is appropriate that uh, such actions lead to harm for what? Because it would lead to what? antimicrobial resistance, because you have uh, uh, interrelated disease condition or symptoms. So mm. you would just not be able to determine whether this is malaria and you start to do treatment. So it is advisable that you have or have a laboratory diagnosis and, conf and, laborat and a confirmed case. Confirmed tests must be performed before you can do, proceed with uh, in terms of treatment, mm. yeah. Thank you so much. All right, so I guess that's all about it, the question that we have uh, prepared today. I will just open the, the, the floor for anybody on the audience, anybody who has a question related to malaria. While uh, our doctor is giving the next answer, you can go ahead and either unmute yourself or even type in the, in the chat box anything related to malaria. You can go ahead and ask it. While people are thinking about their question, I just want to add this a little Weird question, but you know, uh, it just came up. Mm -hmm. Say people with sickle cell, cell anemia, you know, that mutation, they are kind of uh, resistant to malaria. Is that medically medically proven? Yes or no? Okay, um, maybe you got you, the doctor, will come from the clinical perspective. Um, but uh, at this point, we somehow say yes that from the scientific research conducted, okay, survival with one single cell gene, I prevented from contracting severe forms of malaria. But mm. then again, there's a difference now with a sickle cell, having sickle cell trait provides malaria pro protection, but having sickle cell anemia does not. So those mm. are two different, all right? Having a sickle cell gene prevent contracting severe forms of malaria. 
But having sickle cell anemia does not have prevent the, uh, the contracting malaria. Because obviously, you know, when the person is anemic, there's a reduction in terms of our red blood cell count, right? And obviously, with them, the, the parasite, the plasmodium, is destroying red blood cell. So the person is being exposed. So you already have what called pre exposed factor. Obviously, with the internal of sickles, that got sickness or sickle cell anemic patients, they are often uh, dependent on the boosting of their red blood cells. So it's only when it has to do with the gene. But once the condition is a, a, a suffice in terms of the sickle cell anemia, the person does not have that prevent got that resistance. Okay. So in terms of the sickle cell alley, it's well known as a variant that causes the red blood cells to be deformed in terms of a sickle shape. So in the condition of that, it indicates that there is non-mutant form of the YP globulin gene that provides resistance to malaria. So it's not really certain in terms of the condition in such a case of person. All right, thank you so much. And in a clinical way, in a clinical perspective to give that answer, I think uh, because as uh, uh, Mr. Johnson mentioned, as the red blood cells are not working properly, they get broken easily. And when the red blood cells get broken, the parasite cannot live anymore and kind of uh, die outside. And uh, because of time, we're just gonna take this last question. Uh, Mohammed says, is it possible to use RDT and determine the degree of malaria? Okay, um, so uh, it is based on the, 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 the species that's causing the malaria. Because as we may mention, even though we said that because we have the presenter coming to present, so we could not have discussed the detail in terms of uh, their, 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 their viral virus of our plasmodium species. So yeah. the rapid diagnostic test is not, is, is not, is not to some extent degree of certainty. So that's why normally we are doing the blood smell to be able to do the block, the count of the of in terms of parasitemia. So that would be able to determine in terms of in terms of the, the plasmodium species. Because with every plasmodium species, there, for example, we have the plasmodium fasciparum, the plasmodium fever, Those for them that account for about 90% of all malaria cases. But then you also see that there were, in terms of severity, we got the plasmodium ovale and other conditions. So mm. you cannot depend directly on the, the RDT because with, in terms of epidemiology, the, 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 the plasmodium species that affects people in different regions are different. So RDT is not more effective in terms of degree of surety. So that's why you normally do the blood smell so to determine the, paras the, the parasite. All right, thank you so much, Dr. Johnson Kerpula. We are, we are really happy to have you here. And then we uh, wish you good luck with uh, uh, the MPH work that you're doing here in the country of China. And God bless you. Thank you, sir. All right. So thank you. And we're going to move on to the next uh, part of our presentation. She's going to allow us who's going to help us and give us a brief introduction. Uh, so you can hear us. Mr. K. Duna, can you hear us? I'm hearing you clearly, sir. Okay. If you can just mute, or shall I say you remove the voice of one of your device, I think your laptop maybe, so then we cannot have the interference uh, coming from your devices. Is it now? okay? Yeah, now it's all right. You can go ahead and do your presentation. Uh, so since we have 10 minutes left, we can go ahead and do it. Thank you so much, sir. Okay. Mm. Please give me one minute. Let me share my screen and get my, my slides up. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, can you please help me to, to get away from your end? I'll present only because it's going to give me a hard time from my end here. Come again. 
Can you just please help me to put the slash off on your end? I'll present from here. Okay, I can here. do that for you. Sure. All right. Okay. Sure. Okay. Yeah, because it's giving me a hard time from my end here. Okay, we have the screen that is up. Uh, It's okay, you can okay. go ahead. So you got everyone getting me? Yes, we can hear you, sir. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. My... Hello, Hello, good afternoon. Yes, we can hear you. Good afternoon. I'm not seeing, I'm not, I'm not seeing, I'm not seeing. I'm not seeing. I'm not seeing on my screen. Uh, if you're using your phone, you need okay, to... okay. Oh, oh God. can you see it? Oh, yeah, I'm seeing it. I'm, I'm seeing, seeing it. it. Okay. okay. Good, good afternoon from my end. Uh, I'm KS Duna. I'm a final year medical student at the Near East University Faculty of Medicine Department of Medical Microbiology and Clinical Microbiology with emphasis to infectious diseases and clinical microbiology. And today I'll be talking about plasmodium. Mainly we'll be focusing on plasmodium. First of all, we've got many plasmodium species, there are many, but we'll be focusing mainly on malaria today. And what Okay, for plasmodium species, they, they are the agent of malaria and it belongs to the phallum epicomplexa. And the phallum epicomplexa includes some other species like plasmodium, barbacea, tosoplasma, cryptosporidium, and so on. And for these organisms, not only malaria, okay, back please, one minute, back, back. Okay, for all these organisms that are just listed, they have a system of organelles at the epical complex that produce and allow the source to penetrate the host. Yes. So for the important species that we'll be focusing on today mostly is Plasmodium fasciparum. But there are other species of Plasmodium like Vivas, Ovali, Malaria, and Nolesi. All of them are important in terms of where you find yourself. For all of them, like I said, all of them are important in terms of where you find yourself. So we from the Africa region, Plasmodium fasciparum is very, very much important to us because we encounter it every time. And for people from Europe and other areas in Europe, the Western world, Vivas and Ovali is very much cardinal to them because it's something that affects them because for them, they have the Duffy block, the Duffy block group. And we from Africa, we don't have the Duffy block group. So Vivas and Ovali, we, we do not encounter it. Next slide. So how can uh, malaria be transmitted? So we said it can be transmitted via the female and the female mosquito, as you can see on the picture there. So it's just a mosquito bite. Oh, host is asking me to start video. So we said it can be transmitted to human via the, the female and the female mosquito. A bite from the female and the female mosquito, you can get infected. For malaria, Nestla. Okay, so the life cycle, we're going to discuss the life cycle in sequences. So for the life cycle, we're going to be discussing the two stages. The first one is the sexual stage, which is in the, 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 the female and the female mosquito. For this asexual stage, they are the disease forming stage, which is called the oocyst. And the asexual stage is the stage in human, it's the troposoid stage, which is the infected stage. So for the sexual stage in the female and the female mosquito, one thing to know that the female and the female mosquito is not infected by malaria. It's only it's just a vector or a carrier. So once it's within or it have encountered the red blood cells within, 
a human or an animal cell, that's when the infection starts to take place. So we'll discuss the two stages in sequence, the, the sexual stage, which is within the female adophilian mosquito, and the asexual stage, which is within human male. The diagram right here, okay. So what the, the, the mosquito do is that it just take a metal site from the blood of infected human beings. So for example, I'm sick with malaria, and I have a mosquito bite. They ingest these gametocytes from the red blood cells of this infected person. And I talk about the oocyst, the oocyst, which, which, which is the disease causing space. So the spores off on this disease causing stage is to reach the salivary gland of the mosquito. And the mosquito use their salivary gland, they use it to infect with the mosquito bite, the female and female mosquito, they use it to infect a human. So there is like, it's a recycle, recycle. They are taking it from infected person. They, they extract the gametocyte from infected person, which is the, the disease forming stage, the oosties. Then they use it and infect another human by a mosquito bite, which is the trochozoa stage. So the spores are from the mosquito salivary gland, they are what they use to ingest in another human for the disease or for the, the sickness malaria too, for it to cause the sickness malaria. Next slide. Okay, the rapid infection of the hepatocyte is stuff in the, 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 the infected stage, which is the essential cycles in human. The ritual cycle we all know is red blood cells. The ritual cell cycle begin in the merozoid. And one thing I want to, 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 to point out here is the receptor for malaria. It's very, very important because every disease that, that attack or infect the body, they have their receptor. The receptor of malaria is the red blood cells. What they do is that they attach to the red blood cells receptor, then the troposoe, which is the disease causing form, they multiply within the red blood cells, then they form new merozoids. The merozoids is what the red blood cells, that will what help the red blood cells. So within 24 to 72 hours, the red blood cells, the new merozoids that are formed within the red blood cells, they rapture and they release new form of new form of merozoids to infect new red blood cells. So what they do in the body is if the, the troposoid form, which is the disease causing form, if it is formed within the body, they attack the red blood cells because the red blood cells are their only receptors within the body. So what they do is when they attack the red blood cells, they form merozoids. The merozoids, they are merozoids, they are their own functions within the body is just to rapture most of the red blood cells. Next slide. Yeah, so what they do is the spores are now to invade the liver. That's why I talk about hepatocyte. And the process is mediated by linger present in, in outer protein of the spores, which is called second spore. The second spores or protein is very, very important for the infected states of malaria. So in human, for in, in human, plasmodium got two stages within the human. The liver stage, which is the erythrocytic stage, the red blood, and the, the erythrocytic stage, and the blood stage, which is the ritual side stage. So these are the two stages that they form within the body. We're going to discuss them more within the upcoming slide. We're also going to discuss about cerebral, cerebral malaria. Next slide. Okay, so we go. In the liver stage, plasmodium vivas and ovary infection. Some of the spores also they enter the dormant stage immediately and after evasion of the hip of the hypnozoids. These stages are responsible for the relapse phenomenon, the relapse diseases seen in malaria infection that caused by these diseases. For this one, it's not merely for people from Africa because people from Africa are highly affected by vivas and ovary because as I said previously, we do not have the Duffel group, the Duffel blood group. This is merely from people in Europe and the Americas. So for them, they, they are mainly affected by ovary and vivax, while we from the, I think South Sahara, the, the South Sahara African region, we are infected by plasmodium species, the common malaria that we know about. Next stage. Okay, the duration of the, the, the invasion of, of malaria is different, different within all the diseases. So for, for plasmodium nolesi, it's 24 hours. For vivas and ovary and fasciparum is 48 hours in malaria. This is one species that normally people don't talk about. And normally I would like to throw light on it because 
we talk about malaria, 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 but there's a species within plasmodium that's also called plasmodium malaria. Most of the time, we don't really focus on it because it's not within our domain. They don't affect us. But it's also a, it's also a species that people try to like, people try to like confuse it with the typical malaria that get infected with fasciparum, the, the female anophila mosquito. But one thing I want to point out is plasmodium malaria is different from plasmodium fasciparum, which causes the, the malaria from the female anophila mosquito. So nobody should be like confused when I'm talking about plasmodium fasciparum different and I'm talking about plasmodium malaria different. These are two different species. And after the release of the new marriage voice that they are formed within the red blood cells, that what you find in, in the clinical diseases. And the clinical diseases for all these species that are just listed, they are very, very different. Next slide. Okay, so um, like, as I said, most of these diseases, they have different, different receptor sites within the body, different, different binding sites within the body. So for viva and ovary, they attack only immature cells. It's different from malaria. Malaria is sinister cells, while fasciparum, which is our main focus of today's lecture, they invade the red blood cells, regardless of the age. They can produce high level fever and parasitemia. When we talk about parasitemia, it's parasite in the blood and they can mostly cause serious diseases. So our focus today will be on fasciparum, which we'll be talking about. Like I said, for fasciparum, the receptors is the red blood cells. And they can attack the red blood cells regardless of the age. You can be young, as we know from Africa, you can be infected with malaria, you can be old, you can be infected with malaria, middle age. Malaria don't have a specific age, they can infect people. So from birth to death, malaria can infect you, especially plasmodium fasciparum. Next slide, please. Okay, this one I've already talked about. In, in West and Central Africa, we do not have this dolphin blood group. So that's why the prevalence of plasmodium vivas or ovary diseases are very low in this region. Next slide, next slide, please. Okay, so we'll talk about the clinical diseases of malaria. We all know that fever is the hallmark of malaria, which is initiated by the ruptures of the red blood cells. We, it is also initiated by the release of the new merozoids. So once we're talking about clinical diseases of malaria, the first one we talk about is fever. So how fever develop? Fever develop by the release of the cytokines in interleukins one. Not just interleukins one, but tumor necrosis factor and other cytokines, once they are released within the macrophages and the, the parasite is formed. But most, mostly interleukins one, interleukins one, the release of interleukins one and tumor necrosis factor in the macrophages cause fever. Next slide. Okay, so these are the, the distinction between all, all the diseases. I think I discussed this one. The interval, 24 hour interval is for Nulesi, 48 hour interval is for fasciparums, and 72 hour interval is for malaria. As you can see on the screen, there, these are the various symptoms. We can go through it one one because of time. So, next slide. Okay, so we talk about an, an, an anemia. So, what far? Destruction of the normal and parasite red blood cell causes anemia and also called intravascular hemolysis, mostly, particularly in plasmodium falciparum malaria. And also, another thing that we don't know. Okay, let's go. Okay, we'll go in front. Next slide, please, because of time. Okay, so for the treatment, I'll be discussing it in two forms. I'll be discussing the first one, which is the 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 combination therapy and the specific therapy. So normally for in area of chloroquine susceptibility infection, antisnip based combination therapy and chloroquine is given. So as you can see, the antisnip base is given in pregnant women in the first trimester. First trimester, antisnip should also be given in case of chloroquine resistant infection. So we we'll get antimeter plus lumefrentin and tusine plus amodacum and tusine plus mefocum and diadrosetamine plus pamintamine. So it's combination therapy. So this parameter should be given for preventing relapse of vivas and ovary, which is not really, which is not really important to us because fasciparum is our main focus. So we go to the next slide. Okay, so, so this is the preventive therapy. This preventive therapy is a specific therapy we use. So this intermittent preventive therapy for malaria in pregnancy. So it should be given from the start of the second trimester. That's for the pregnancy and Intermittent preventive for infants, for infants should also be given 12 months old of age. 
Then for the seasonal chemotherapy, monthly amodacone should be given in children greater than six years old in each, in, in each transmission or the seasons for, we normally get malaria. Mostly people will say in the rainy season. So is the seasonal therapy we normally give of amodacone am, am for greater than six years old during the transmission season. Next slide, please. Okay, so for for the prevention and control, I think the senior colleague already discussed it first. So the first one is the, the breeding, the mosquito breeding, the control of the breeding. And normally we protect individuals by doing the screening, the netting, the protective clothing, and insect repellent. So these are all prevention and control methods we use for malaria, for plasmodium species, most especially malaria. So I think we, we could have talked about, there was something that the panel was discussing about the laboratory diagnosis. I could have given more insightful details on it because I have firsthand experience in the hospital, especially in the laboratory, but for the sake of time, maybe during the question time, during the question and answer sections, I'll be able to answer those questions that I'll ask, especially for the laboratory diagnosis of malaria. So thank you. Thank you all for the time. All right. Thank you so much. Uh... Mr. K or Dr. K, we, we are very appreciative of your time and your effort to uh, give us a very uh, detailed definition and uh, how even how to treat for pregnant women and everybody on malaria. So yeah, so unfortunately because of time constraint, we will have to end our meeting, but we are very uh, thankful for everybody who have joined us tonight or today, depending on where you're listening to us. and. Uh, we also were thank, thankful for uh, Mr. Johnson and uh, Mr. Duna who joined us today and gave us a very uh, interesting uh, presentation because we, we all know that malaria is a big problem, not only in Africa, in South America, but also in some part of Asia. And as uh, we have learned today, some countries have been able to eradicate the disease. And then we hope and pray with a lot of work with the government our government uh, involvement and then also the people's involvement, we'll be able to put an end to this uh, public health uh, issue that has been plaguing a lot of countries. So we thank everybody. And for those who are following us on YouTube, thank you so much. And don't forget to subscribe. And for those who are following us on, uh, on Facebook, we also welcome, we thank you guys. So uh, without further ado, we're just gonna go ahead and uh, and our meeting. Thank you, Dr. Johnson. Thank you, uh, Dr. K. And then um, we leave it here. Thank you.